Welcome everyone back to Comic Book Journeys. I'm your host, Brett. And the recent uh, acquisition of Atlas Comics by Paramount, they're planning on making a series of Atlas IP-owned movies. They want to compete against Marvel, and these Atlas Comics came out around 1974. Some of them lasted only four issues, and... Um, only last the company only lasted a little over a year, so um, I would say, well, this is an example of the Scorpion. This um, covers from Howard Chaykin, uh, who's later was in very uh, famous in his DC uh, comics work, and of course American Flag for first comics. And notice that issue one, his costume is you know rather a classic pirate style. And you move on to issue number two to change the costume. He's more like a generic Marvel superhero back in the 70s. So they should have just went with this uniform instead of this uniform. Anyway, let's move on to some of the one-issue um, titles. You have Target. It's basically a... Uh, terrorist fighter, uh, CIA, CIA character, and it seemed to have last only one issue there. Then we have Sergeant Stryker's Death Squad. Kind of reminds me of Sergeant Rock with Sergeant Fury, and you get Sergeant Stryker. So, I'm curious what Paramount's going to, which title Paramount's going to start out with. But we move on to the Grim Ghost. This reminds me of the Western Ghost Rider back in the late 60s and of course Ghost Rider has you know Flaming Skull rides a motorcycle or he rides a car now he drives a car now so the Grim Ghost I think it lasted about three or four issues I only have number one then we have Phoenix Man of Tomorrow the Man of Tomorrow that's supposed to be Superman but anyway <laughs> Well, let's move on to uh, Morlock 2001. 2001 being 18 years ago. Seems like, well, Morlock, it's got to flip through a little bit. Kind of reminds me of, uh, well, Warlock. Morlock, Warlock, uh, you figure it out. But some, you know, pretty decent artwork. Had some ads. And the other titles, but uh, yeah, this guy, I mean, well, well you see his, his hair is kind of fly hair, like Warlock had fly hair, it's that 70s fly hair, that feathered look. Yeah, see, he's a bit, uh, a little similar to Warlock, but anyways, I think they only got some one or two issues. And we get to the Demon Hunter. The Demon Hunter. Well, okay. A nice uh, fiery skull there. He's fighting a demon. I think that lasted one issue. They get to the Cougar. Cougar's kind of reminds me of Daredevil. But he's a stuntman. From the 70s. And, uh... Well, he's working on a movie set. And vampires and cougars don't mix. Well, that's great. Then, of course, we get to the Brute. The Brute, I suppose, is a copy of the Hulk. It's a prehistoric uh, wild man who was, uh, who was awakened um, like thousands of years ago. Um, he was on in ice, and he woke up in the uh, present day. Nice, intriguing-looking cover. Makes you want to go buy it. See what happens next. And, uh... Well, this could be a possible property that Paramount can make in movies. Since Marvel, since MCU kind of screwed up the Hulk, they want a big tough Hulk again. Like we always love our big tough Hulk. And uh, I think they're going to pretty much, I'm thinking they're going to use this guy, this character right here. Well, he's caught up in a, well, here's a, let me get a better picture. Uh,. Yeah, there he is. 
Guy, he looks like he's about 20 feet tall. <laughs> How do you wind up in a cave all scratched up like that? No. Oh. So, here's the second issue. He's fighting the Reptile Man. The Reptile Man. You know, similar issues that the Hulk would fight during the 1970s. So, and um, let's move on to Iron Jaw. I've actually had the four issue set of Iron Jaw. Um, written by Mike Fleischer and Mike Sikowski did the artwork. Uh, Pablo Marcos did some of the artwork. I think issues, uh, I think it was issue, well, yeah, Fleischer did this. Well, Mike Sikowski did, did the art. Jack Cable did the inks and Saga of Iron Jaw. And it's basically Conan with an Iron Jaw when you think about it. I mean, they're not bad. They're pretty good. Barbaric Adventures. And we have, yeah, Pablo Marcos did his second issue. Very dynamic artwork. I think, uh, I think Neil Adams did the cover for number one. And I think number two as well. And of course, here we got Iron Jaw number three. And it's called Headhunters of Almond Rock. Nice. Sounds like a Robert E. Howard story. They're basically taken off from Robert E. Howard characters. So Atlas is basic, basically they're, you know, want to take down Marvel. And it didn't quite work out. But they they hired a lot of the uh, artists in, from Marvel and DC. Paid them, you know, more a higher at higher rates so they went on over to atlas for like a, a year and uh someone went back well yeah most of them went back to marvel and dc so they're very sought after artists back in the day so yeah very dynamic illustrative artwork i like it very decent story get the iron jaw number four nice cover i admire it very nice and uh yeah there you go who will forge a jaw of iron certainly i sure would not want that I mean, how are you gonna chew food it's gotta be pretty tough well this guy lost his jaw obviously but it's basically the origin of iron jaw i don't want to give up anything if you guys want to purchase it at your comic shops but a lot of these comics from the 70s that have failed, they were in quarter bins or dollar bins. And later, some of them gained some value, especially Planet of Vampires. Now, Planet of Vampires, there was a motion picture back in 1965 starring Barry Sullivan. And they landed on a planet of vampires. But uh, I watched bits and pieces of that movie. It's a bit slow. I may have to rewatch it again. I may have, may have forgotten a few things about it. But basically, it's a... Uh, these astronauts were on an interstellar trip and they come back to Earth and they discovered that uh, the Earth had been taken over by vampires. And very, very scary business, folks. Ooh, doing evil experiments and, uh, you know, and whatnot. But uh, yeah, that's some nice work. So. I believe the Planet of Vampires and I believe the issue one of Scorpion. I think this is going for like $35. <laughs> I didn't pay for $35 for this, mind you, but I kind of, I think I paid maybe a dollar for this one. Gosh, years ago. But yeah, some of these have gone up in value. And, uh, and there's some I sure like to pick up. Uh, the Man Monster was another title that uh, Atlas had. As part of the Tales of Evil um, anthology title, it lasted about three issues, and some of these issues have gone up in value. But uh, you never know; these could be a good uh, a good thing for the uh, collector. I'd say if you give, if there's a chance to find these Atlas issues, pick them up for all means. It should be worth quite a bit, especially when you have Paramount involved in making movies out of some of these titles. There's one um, title that I don't have is The Tiger Man. That lasted about three issues, but uh, I actually based that character of um, a made-up character from Enforcers, Inc. Well, 
I'll get that to another video. Uh, anyway, subscribe, uh, push the like bucket button, um, ring the bell for alerts. This is Comic Book Journeys. Brett signing off. Have a great day, everybody.